the Joe Rogan experience? Um, yeah, I don't know if capitalism is the problem, but maybe it's how people engage with capitalism. Maybe it's what people choose to focus on. If you're just about acquiring wealth and money, some people are, yeah, they're going to be very deeply unhappy and it's going to be this weird game of acquiring influence and power till you just have this insurmountable mound of money that you live on top of, right? I don't think that's a, a good way for them either. I think if we're going to really, we're going to look at this country fairly, we have to look at, think of all the poor neighborhoods and imagine being born in those poor neighborhoods and imagine being born in a place where there's no resources, there's no hell, you're living in the fucking mountains of West Virginia, those coal mining communities or people, are, it's all just mobile homes and pills and it's chaos and just extreme poverty what do you do if you're stuck in there what if you if you're born into that clan that's the group you're born into you're fucked man you're fucked we have to take our resources and concentrate on parts of america the same way we concentrate on many other problem spots in the world and look at them as like hey man there's a spot where people are fucked mm. we should unfuck them yes. we should figure out a way to go into every single horrible community in this country, on this planet, ones that are just as bad as some that you see in third world countries, they exist right here in America. Fix that. Don't ignore that. That's crazy. If they're in Detroit, if they're in wherever the fuck they are, whatever, whatever the horrible community is, why isn't there a concerted national effort to eliminate that? That's a major source of crime. It's a major source of problem. People feel like they got fucked over in life, so they want to get at you and take from you because you got that easy road. But hey, man, you're born in the fucking suburbs. Hey, man, your mom and dad are still together. You know, hey, man, your, your dad has a job, and your mom's at home baking and shit. You live like a motherfucking Norman Rockwell movie. Fuck you, man. My mom's on crack. My mom's a prostitute. My life is hell. My dad beats me. I've been sexually molested since I was a little kid. This is the reality that people yes. exist in. They don't feel like anybody's coming to help them. We, we need to concentrate on that. The government, if the government really cares about us, if they're really involved in social engineering and making America better again, make those places better. Those are the pr places you need to concentrate on, not tax breaks for fucking super rich corporations that get you in place. They, they make enough money, man. That's not the problem. The money, where, where the money goes, what's it being allocated towards? The biggest problem in our country is these in impossible to escape communities yes. th that so many people just get sucked into this trap and for every person that gets out and becomes a basketball player or a successful business person and, and they have this story about the poverty that they grew up in they they are so rare yes and, th and then it's not to be applauded that they got through that it is but it's more to be we should understand like hey we've got a real fucking problem that we're churning out all these people that live with, with they, they start out in life with a massive deficit start out in life a Emotionally fucked, physically abused. They start out with everybody around them's a loser. Everybody's going to jail. Everybody's uh, constantly doing pills or this or that. The, it's all negative. And to, to, to ask them to develop their own positive mindset uniquely in a vacuum is preposterous. Yes. So all these pull them up by your bootstraps. All those assholes. Hey, you got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Like, they don't even have boots, man. You don't understand. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. You, you've never seen it. You've never been involved in that kind of poverty. It's yes. not fair. It's no. not fair at all. And if we care about people, that's what we should fucking care about. Yes, I couldn't agree more. That's the number really one problem. Put. And it's everywhere in the world. All the, all the crime and poverty. Imagine if everyone, the lowest you could live is like a middle class existence. Yes. Boy, everybody would all be a lot more fucking relaxed. <laughs> Immediately. If you always had meals, you always had food, you always had a roof over your head. Everyone lives middle class. Holy shit. I mean, mm. obviously, that's way past the expectations that we have right now for the world because like $34,000 a year globally puts you in the world 1%. You know, mm. I mean, that's the if you make thirty four thousand dollars a year, which is hard to live on, man. Yes. That you you're in the one percent of the world. But that standard that you've I so very eloquently described is I think achievable and yeah. that ought be the aim and when you give just one example of how legislate the bias of legislation is continually to support the powerful while making yeah. the just making nominal gestures to yes. poverty oh, good way of putting it yeah nominal gestures i like the way you put that yeah and like, like so the, 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 the if there is a point to nation if there is a point to a flag and our belief and this idea that 
there is an America and there is a Britain and we're all together and we're all one and we've got a common destiny and a common past, then if we're not, if we're ignoring and neglecting those communities, then I say that is what defines us, you know, and until there are systems, codes, regulations that prioritise that, we will continue to live in something heading to, if not a dystopia, something moving in the direction of dystopia, where the priorities and uh, dreams are sort of owned really by the kind of Bit mad, evil insect robot images that we've well, seen discussed. Earlier. People do get very concerned when someone reaches a point of excessive power and influence, like a Jeff Bezos type character. When you see some guy who's not, he doesn't have a million dollars. Like you go, know, wow, guy's got a million dollars. Like he must be so relaxed. He's got so much money. No, he's got a hundred and fifty billion. And he works every day maniacally and he's constantly doing new projects and new things and buying out Whole Foods and that's like pinnacle capitalism is one of the things that scares people the most when someone just acquires just insane position of power and wealth yes. like like a Bill Gates type character yes. who is very altruistic, very, very generous. Bill Gates is like he's like one of the better examples of someone who gains a lot of money and then does a lot to help people, especially in his retirement. All all they do is focus on charitable organizations and yeah, which is brilliant. But yeah. like, like, and um, you know, marvelous. And you know, I'm not, not criticizing the great achievements of brilliant people, but uh, like, it, but it really for me that demonstrates the lim that the limitations come from the type of systems we live in. Yeah. That you can't through charity affect every impoverished community in America. You know, like we. The systems that we have are, oh, well, if you're poor like that, you know, the bootstrap model, well, this guy did it. Look at this great yeah. guy who overcame the odds. You know, until, like, I feel like, in a sense, charity has become a kind of valve that allows, uh, you know, people like you and I who aren't poor to feel like, well, I do a bit, you know, I'm sort of involved. I can wash my hands of it. Yeah. When, you know, like, what these, unless we... <laughs> There's, there is no America, there is no England unless we have integral relationships with one another right. where we support one another. We're Otherwise, all on it's a just, team. Right. If we really are on a team and we see someone who's completely downtrodden who's on our team and we ignore them, well, that's not much of a fucking team, is it? No. I mean, that's what I feel like when I come to red lights and I see homeless people. I, I feel terrible. I'm like, I feel like, you know, I mean, there's part of you is like, don't give them any money because you know they're going to just buy drugs. Yeah. You know, let them figure it out. But then they're not going to figure it out. They have mental health issues. And no, they're stuck yeah, out right. here. And they're supposedly on the team. They probably were born in America. They probably have national citizenship here. You know, they. this is our team. And no one gives a fuck that they're camped out under the bridge. It's like it, the, the diffusion of responsibility that comes with these massive numbers. 20 million in L.A., 300 and plus, whatever it is now. What is it, like 320? In America? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I think there's 90,000 in the general California, like a city's worth of yeah. homeless people. Isn't it? It's not yeah. difficult for me to envisage. Like when we talk about the transcendent states that can be achieved through meditation and psychedelics, meaning that beings like us can access them, it's not difficult to envisage human, like a type of creature, a type of being, a little more evolved than us that would look back and say, oh my God, they allowed homelessness. They yeah. allowed those impoverished communities. Oh, why yeah. was it? Oh, because they had this belief in competitive systems and survival of the fittest that were resourced from ideas that weren't really meant to be translated into that. When you were talking before about like the natural world is fraught with competition and threat, of course it is. that is animal. So, you know, I'm not disputing what you're saying there, but we can't transpose that into an economic system. Survival of the fittest, if you ain't got enough hustle and muscle, fuck you, you're, you're down by the wayside. You know, here we have an obligation to aspire to the better parts of our nature, not to continually use materialism and rationalism to justify that 20% of the population population of you know or whatever percentage it is are just garbage or just waste and they're that's affordable we can accord we can live yeah. with that it's for me it's that's why would we once we have the knowledge that oh yeah we shouldn't be farming in that way oh we shouldn't have social systems all of the the answer is always the same because if you were to change in that area it will affect the interests of the powerful it will affect impede the ability of certain organizations to make profit now i'm you know i'm not talking about you know i don't know the lexicon enough around socialism and capitalism and marxism and various forms of social organization i'm just talking about my assumption that we're all resourced from the same basic material and phenomena we all have compassion and love in us and if we on an individual level can achieve some level of access to that then we can start to organize ourselves on that basis not on the basis of well what's the most i can get as an individual it's rational for me to i'm not involved in that that doesn't affect me personally you know mm. and i think it's a hard thing for us to hold i think the reason we all do just live with homelessness and the only decision we make is do we 
put a couple of dollars out the window at the light or not, then like it's hard to hold that. It's hard well, it's to all, love more than a hundred people. Or there's no fix. Like there's no not as an individual, but not as not one person, and even collectively as a group. When you have mental health issues, unless you want to institutionalize those people, yeah. But then who? Here's the thing, right? If everyone has a unique and uh, if everyone has their own ideas about what to do with their life and everyone has freedom, what if you just don't have enough people that are interested in in mental health of the homeless people? You just don't have enough. There's no I resources. Guaranteed. The, the resources, yeah, that's a big question because our systems are biased in a particular what direction. If there's money? What if they have government funding? Do you think that they could cure homelessness? One of the advantages I've got of being a drug addict is it means I have to help other drug addicts as part of my own recovery. This puts me into areas, institutions, groups, facilities where I'm meeting drug addicts and always what you'll find the people that work there there's always someone like a man or a woman most often in my personal experience is a woman some matriarchal woman full of mother energy that just will do this shit forever for free for nothing that just loves it that's just put herself like my grandmother did or my mother did or like these women do between people in the gutter that mm -hmm. are just willing to say I'll be the person I'll yeah. be the person in LA at Friendly House it was a woman called Peggy Albrecht that used to run a play uh, Friendly House was for women that have got drug and addiction and abuse issues issues and like this woman she was from chicago she was 90 years old by the time like i met her. she was so rude and brilliant and beautiful and entirely willing to dedicate herself and i think every community everywhere everyone knows people like that and i feel like the same way as like if it is someone that's got a great capacity to play basketball or be a comic like i think that when you spot those people mm. that you encourage them yeah, they're talented and talented helping them. people yeah, yeah the talent of compassion and yeah. you know but we don't value that unless it's like unless it can be turned to a profit fuck off all of those organizations like those uh, organizations that help people with addiction issues you know like they are maligned and like the the people that profit from the opioid crisis they are supported they are able to conceal as john oliver brilliantly revealed that they're able to conceal their practices continually the the invisible bias is in the direction of profit and like the failure of certain types of socialism doesn't mean that's the end of the argument i think we have an obligation to look for ways of accessing our own uh, higher nature better nature kinder nature call it what you will and seeing how we can organize that now, as an individual you can do so much i mean if, if bill gates can you know fucking hell i don't know cure malaria and make the significant charitable thing you know these impressive powerful people can't make a meaningful difference then clearly this is a systemic problem well there's also the problem with homeless people in that they're adults um, when you become an adult and you develop from the time you're a child, it's probably very likely that the damage was all done while they were young. They were probably abused and mm. neglected, and there's a lot of issues that led them to either have mental health problems or they had mental health problems already. Maybe they have genetic problems. Then on top of that, there's drug abuse. To, you, for each one of those people to get well you're going to need a massive amount of folks. You're not going to have one old lady who's rude, who's fun <laughs> and brilliant. That's a cute movie. No, but that's and, 20 you know, people. Maybe, but I think there's a... Yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah, write that good, down. Write it down. I could yeah. be rich. Yeah, who would who'd be the woman... Who's um, player? Uh, Faye Dunway now, or some shit? I would have liked the one that was uh, out of Golden Girls, Estelle Getty. Is she oh, still available? I don't think oh, God. that's a wrap. Betty White's still around. Betty White's still hanging in there. Yeah, but would you book a movie around her stink hanging God, around? I don't know that this is going to work. Ago, yeah. How yeah. are we going to fund this? Yeah. It's, um, no, you're right. Look, there's limitations to the individual, but let's not like crash this optimism in the crib now, Joe, because I no, feel no, like if no, there I were systemic have, I'm not change... crashing the optimism, but I'm saying the logistics of it would almost be insurmountable and it's very hard to But what we refer to, to logistics you, is not an objective thing it's a thing that's been biased over time sort of once a person is developed once they're a human it's very difficult to turn that train around yeah if we can save the community and save the future like help like less people get through fucked help let help more people get through with hope and with a real possibility for improving their life versus have this sense of hopelessness that many are confronted with that's gonna make less crime i agree that's like that's just if they if someone looked at it from a social engineering standpoint it almost seems like they will, the only way that would ever have to happen would be there's be some fucking catastrophe that forced people to act like we sometimes need something that's shoved in our face to force us to act but if someone brilliantly calculated the amount of resources that it would require and then also brilliantly calculated how much less crime it would have, how much less, how many more innovations because people didn't waste their lives. In fact, they 
got through life and used one of the most valuable resources we have, which is the human imagination and creativity and ingenuity. Like, and we're missing that on these people that are growing up in these horrible environments where they can't escape. They're so fucked from, they're in gangs, they're, you know, the crime and poverty and violence. They're so fucked that whatever genius they have is wasted on this nonsensical existence. If they could just show that and quantify how much that would be, how valuable that would be to the overall culture and community of the, of the continent and then ultimately of the earth, I mean, there, you would have a reason to engineer and think about this. Yeah, it's a beautiful, that is really beautiful. And it's interesting that the way that I agree with you, that it almost has to at some point be translated into monetary yes. value because otherwise people and don't safety. seem to read it. Yeah, and safety. For everybody, for them who live in these horrible communities, wouldn't it be great, again, if everybody lived like a middle class person? The idea that that's impossible seems so insane. It almost seems like, well, then nobody should live like that then. Like either everybody should be able to live like that or nobody should be able to live like that. That was like, that's what everybody really wants, right? You want to be comfortable, like right? in, in terms of like your ability to exist. And then all the things you're doing that you struggle with should be a good percentage of them other than emotional and friendship type things should be of your own choosing you choose to to take a difficult path you, sh you choose to take an adventure you choose to try to enrich yourself with this difficult experience and the challenge of it and try to overcome that challenge instead of ch you your challenge is not to get killed by a gang you know your, your challenge is not get fucked by your uncle again you know what i mean i mean this is what people have to deal with and you're you're missing these brilliant minds they don't get this chance to come through and and sneak through that fucking salmon ladder you know get up to the top this is very uh, beautiful that you're uh, passionate about this and i think popularizing these ideas is important because I feel that then people will be familiar with this kind of language and will recognize that when there is political discourse, how fatic and empty it is. <laughs>